What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Scott. Welcome to the Scott Reports. Today, I'm bringing you my overall first impressions of Netflix's latest anime project, Be the Beginning, brought to you by Production IG. And I can tell you guys right now, this is the type of series that I've been clamoring for since Psychopaths. You know, that Psychopaths, that Death Note type of series, you know, the gritty, dark, crime drama but at the same time you got some supernatural mixed in as well and this series so far has managed to mesh all of that together into one and I must say they're doing a very good job of it so far now I have only watched the first three episodes so this video is basically going off that and I will not go into spoiler territory because it just came out today I want people to get a chance to watch it and if I do a full series review for this it's going to depend on how quick I get through it I mean I plan on watching as many episodes as I can over the week Weekend, but you know how things go but overall I'll just go ahead and say it I was very impressed by this first string of episodes so far because if you guys know me you know that I love psychological I love supernatural and I love thrillers I love things like this I love things like Coco I love things like psychopaths death note the things that make you think the things that have that dark mystery type to it and B it's bringing something different with trying to roll all of this into one because on one hand, the series comes off as if it's going to be like a murder mystery because it's centering around a serial killer that goes by B. But the thing about this serial killer is that he's very unconventional because he's actually killing bad people. But at the same time, there are people looking for him because, you know, he's still killing people and he has ties to a couple of people in the series that, again, we won't get into because of spoilers. That's going to make things very interesting for the series in the long run. And it's very captivating. Now, I must admit, after watching the first three episodes, you're probably not going to get everything right away. As a matter of fact, you might have to start re-watching some of the episodes to catch some of the things you miss, especially one big important thing about a character by the name of Koku in this series, who is for the most part our protagonist, but there's things that you're going to miss. And I'm actually watching this series dug because when you get to a type of series like this, they tend to get preachy. They can get wordy and you can get lost, especially when you're trying to read so much dialogue and everything that's going on and especially a series like this is going to mix a whole bunch of genres i just feel that it would be better to watch this dubbed also it takes place in like the european region so i don't know it just feels like it would be better to watch this dubbed and i must say me personally i think the dub cast that they have on board for this is doing a pretty good job with the series as well and of course it's production ig so when you're coming to this type of field they have experience when they're dealing with this type of genre now again initially this series does start off as a crime thriller as the series has a little bit of world building to do is they kind of just drop you into just the world of everything already going on you know you have this organization called the ris who are looking for the serial killer named b i mean you got some people who are hunting this girl at the beginning of the first episode and they did you know god knows what to her and actually hunting her down only for them to get taken down by this mysterious character by the name of b and he leaves his calling card which is a marking and then you start to get the cast involved and then that's when you start to build at the midpoint of the episode of what we're dealing with here and i must say this character um koku looks absolutely awesome with the blade that he can form from his hands and the black wings and this is where the supernatural elements start to come in because at first they're selling it like it's just going to be a crime drama of these people trying to hunt down some sick and mysterious people but there's some supernatural things going on in the background the government is aware of it of course the government is trying to cover it up as you know scenes of things go on and they're using their technology and things like that to cover it up to make it look like oh no nothing's going on here going about your day but the thing is something's being covered up so well that even the people within this organization called the IRS are beginning to scratch their heads of how this is happening and whenever you got a series like this with superpowers and supernaturals and things like this the government is always involved government is probably always the reason and then this is where another group is introduced because you have this group of people who are trying to recruit um Koku, well, I'm thinking of Kokoku. <laughs> Koku, they're trying to recruit, recruit him to their cause. 
but at the same time, he's out hunting people just like them. And again, it's a mix. It's going to take a little while. It's going to take a commitment for you to probably see where everything is going. This is a 12 episode series. I don't think three episodes is enough to actually give it a fair shake because I feel like things are probably not going to mesh together until after the midway point maybe things will make sense then the first three episodes i'll be completely honest with you unless you're paying complete attention and you have a keen eye for the things that you can't catch you might be a little bit confused but it starts to build more and more and more and it does iron itself out for what i was seeing and with that you enter your crime drama cast first and foremost you have keith flick who is an eccentric socially awkward detective type of person and he's super intelligent and he looks like he has fallen from grace and fell into a more of a recluse type of way of living and this is all has to do with something with the woman that he loved that was murdered which is no doubt going to be linked to B but is B the serial killer that we really think he is? That's where things start to get interesting as I feel that he is hunting this serial killer, but he doesn't know the identity of who did it. He just knows that maybe B was there, maybe somebody did it that B was after, and then B probably got blamed for it. You know, I'm thinking a little bit further ahead without even watching it. This is just me observing what's going on. But it seems like that's the type of thing that is going on because at the end of the first episode, once you start to get to know the pro who's going to be the protagonist of this series, you know, he has his own type of ways that kind of reminds me of Death Note. I mean, this series has a lot of comparisons to a lot of things where he wants to smite out these evil people, even if he has to kill them. So to think that... Um, Keith Flick is actually after this character. It has to be a lot more to it than that. And he might be on the wrong trail entirely. And also, you know, you have the former partner who knows Flick and who knows who he was back in his heyday per se, as they were friends for like 20 years. And, you know, he's like, he's always been this way, but he hasn't been this weird. And then you have Lily, who is the upbeat and upstart cop who's super serious when she's on the job and when she's at home with her family which is something big. She is kind of, you know, just carefree and, you know, does what she wants to do. She eats meat buns, she runs everywhere, but when she gets to work, it's all business. You know, you have your resident hacker who cares about her tools and her technology and everything, who's the brash person and brings a little bit of comedy to it with her personality. I mean, it's the usual tropes when it comes to a crime drama, but it's just the intricate puzzles that's coming to be is we basically have Koku in the middle and then we have two people vying for this hunt for him because you have Keith who is looking for B or whoever it was that killed this person that he cared about and on the other side you have this sect of people who also possibly have powers just like B as well I mean they have to if they're able to keep up with them as I must say the fight scenes in this series are phenomenal so far and they want to recruit him. You know, they're probably striking back at the government for something that they did. It's going to be one of those things I feel where you might just agree with these people because you know how these things go. Government's always scum in these type of series or it's always something. So people that were done wrong, they escape and they decide to say, we're not going to take it anymore. I think that's what we're facing with this series. But overall, I must also talk about the art style as it's pretty interesting. It reminds me of the current Loop in the Third series, as a matter of fact, as it feels kind of like art moving on paper. I mean, at times it's not really that spectacular and sometimes it looks a little bit like they tried to have like a 90s feel or even like Devil Man. At times it kind of looks like Devil Man in that sense where it's very simplistic, but when it does highlight things that it needs to, especially the fight scenes that take place mostly in like high speed pace, like trains and rooftops and things like that, is where it really shines, even if it is simplistic. But IG goes in and this is a credit to Netflix as well as this is actually something that they're behind. You know, Devil Man was their product too that came out earlier this year in January. That's something that Netflix is actually behind. They get to baby it, produce it, and do what they want, even though Production IG is making the anime. This is different than, say, Seven Deadly Sins or Fate Apocrypha or Fate Last Encore. Where <coughs> where this is being made by someone else, excuse me, where this is being made by someone else and Netflix is just slapping their name on it. This is actually a production from Netflix and they're two for two so far with these series. And again, 
if they can keep this up, maybe this initiative that they're trying to do where they're going to bring out a crap ton of anime this year, this might actually be a good thing. Now, if we can only get them to abandon that binge watch mode in America and start giving us things week by week like Violent Evergarden, then we'll really be good. There's so many series that you can compare this to. I mean, what face value I would say is Psycho Pass meets Terror and Resonance meets Elfin Light with a little bit of monster mixed into it as well. And this is a good thing. I mean, the fact that they're taking all of this and putting it all together into this series, I am captivated so far. As a matter of fact, I cannot wait to get back in and watch some more of the episodes. I highly recommend you at least watch the first three episodes, but I'll say it again. Watching the three episodes, it probably wouldn't be fair because even though it is only 12 episodes, it's gonna take a little bit longer for you to actually start to understand what's going on. You're gonna be confused at first. As a matter of fact, I feel like I have to watch the first three episodes again because I feel like I missed something. But guys, that is my overall thoughts on B, the beginning. Highly recommend that you check it out and very much enjoyed it so far. Let me know what you thought of this series, if you watched it all or if you watched up to where I am or a little bit further in the comments below. But again, since this is a first impressions, let's try to keep it spoiler free. But you know how that goes. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As there's not a shortage of content you indulge on on this channel. As I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. But you chose to listen to me. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. See you soon.